Hi there, this is Jude Socrates. Welcome to today's calculus video where we will be talking about parametric curves. So that's probably a new term for most of you. We are going to start by defining what are called parametric equations. And as the title implies, we are going to make a lot of drawings, a lot of pictures. We will be playing in GeoGebra and we will be drawing these parametric curves. Some of them you've seen before. Uh, some of them are probably completely new to you. Never before seen anything like it. So let's begin with a couple of definitions. So first, uh, what are called parametric equations? They're simply a pair of equations and they look like x is a function of t and y is another function of t where t is from some interval i. And I forgot to write down uh, t is called a parameter. Okay, okay. Pa makes sense. Parametric equations. T is the parameter. So we write, we can also skip the f and the g, and we'll just say that x is x of t, y is y of t. So we don't have to use new letters, x of t and y of t. This also looks more natural because in order to graph a parametric curve, we are going to plot all the points. Whoops, a little too far. We're going to plot all the points, x of t, y of t, on the plane, and we will get what is called a parametric curve. Okay, here is our first parametric curve. Uh, x is 2t minus 1, and y is negative 3t plus 4. What's our domain? I didn't write it down. Well, uh, can you plug in any number for t here? Yeah, any number for t here? Sure. So t can be any real number. Okay. So our parameter can be whatever it wants to be. Okay. So we're going to plot some points. And to do that, uh, let's construct a table. All right, here's an empty table. So we're going to specify the t value in the first column, and then we will compute x of t in the second and y of t in the third. Okay, so even though t can be any real number, uh, let's keep it simple. How about let's put zero here in the middle, and then let's go from negative three to negative 2, to negative 1, 0, positive 1, positive 2, positive 3. Okay, we're just going to plot plug-in points. Okay, so uh, for me, it's easy, easy to fill up this table just by thinking uh, one column at a time. Okay, so focus on 2t minus 1. We're going to plug in these numbers for t. Okay. Negative 3 times to negative 6 minus 1, so negative 7 goes in there. Minus 2 times to minus 4 minus 1 minus 5. <clears throat> minus, uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> like why do I, yeah. Minus 2 minus 1 minus 3. 0 minus 1 minus 1. 2 minus 1, positive 1. So there you go, positive 1, uh, 4 minus 1, positive 3, and 6 minus 1, positive 5. Okay, minus 7, minus 5, minus 3, minus 1, plus 1, plus 3, plus 5. Of course, we're just jumping by 2s because that's just the equation of a line. Okay, the slope is 2. So every time we increase t by 1, x increases by 2. Okay, makes sense, doesn't it? Okay, so now that we see that, let's maybe uh, graph the, or not yet graph, uh, compute the y coordinates a little bit faster. So now we're focusing on minus 3t plus 4. Uh, when t is minus 3, you get 9 plus 4, positive 13. Okay, and we said uh, every time you increase t by 1, you increase y by the slope, which is negative 3. So we decrease y by 3 every time. So we will get 10 
and then seven, and then four, and then one, and then negative two, and then negative five. Okay, so just to check when t is three, you'll get negative nine plus four, negative five. Okay, sounds good to me. So, we are going to go to GeoGebra now and we are going to plot these seven points. Okay, so in GeoGebra, we will plot our points are minus seven, 13, and minus five, 10, and so on. So, dot, 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 up to five, minus five. Okay, so if you like, you can copy these seven points down. Follow me to GeoGebra. Uh, if you want to, uh, here's a thought. You can pause the video and plot the points yourself in GeoGebra and ask yourself, okay, how are we going to connect these seven points and what will the picture look like? All right, I'll see you in a little bit. All right, so we got minus seven, 13. I don't see it. Okay, it's up, up there. Minus five, 10. Oh, there's one. And then minus three, seven. Minus one, four. One, one. Hmm. Three minus two. Five minus five. Okay, so let's zoom out. Ooh, ooh, okay. So those are our seven points and we're going to connect them. We'll go from A to B to C to D, E, F, and G. And uh, yeah, you're, you're smart people, right? So we can pretty much see that that looks like they all fall along the same line. Okay, so um, I'm going to show you a command, a GeoGebra command that I don't think we've used before, where we get to basically plot a parametric, a pair of parametric equations. Okay, so the command is curve, right? So there's the curve command, and ooh, there we go. It can be expression, expression, parameter, variable, our t, start value, and value. This one looks similar, except there are three expressions, okay? And that's because for those of you who are going on to multivariable calculus, and of course I have a full set of videos for that subject, we will be drawing parametric curves in space, in three dimensions. Okay, so that's something to look forward to. If you want to check it out, go to my uh, channel on uh, multivariable calculus. Okay, so here's how we will enter the curve, the x coordinate was 2t minus 1. Okay. And the y coordinate was minus 3t, what was it? 9, and I believe it's plus 4. Okay. We'll find out if a minute if my memory is correct. t will go from, uh, we got minus 3 to plus 3, right? So, yeah, let's just see what how that goes. Oh, yes, I was correct. So, there is our curve. Now, of course, uh, the domain is all real numbers. So this is artificial because the only reason I put in minus three to three is because those were the table of values that we constructed, okay? So you can, of course, make this from minus five to plus seven, okay? So, of course, the line is going to be much longer than it was before. Okay. <clears throat> Now, I'm going to show you something neat. Um, strictly speaking, a parametric curve uh, is traced by going from one point to another in increasing value of the parameter t. So strictly speaking, there should be some arrows here going from a to b to c to d and so on. So um, one way to explicitly show those arrows in GeoGebra is using the vector command, okay? So we need the vector from A to B. Okay, there you go. You see a, see that arrow okay, right there? And then if you like, you can make the vector from B to C and so on, okay? So, um, yeah, it's not really very, very strict that we have to do that. 
if you're drawing this on paper, okay, your teacher might say, okay, use arrows, right? And it's easier to draw these arrows when you're drawing on paper or maybe your tablet. Okay, I also want to show you something else. Um, and it uses the concept of a slider. And I'm not sure we've used sliders before. Uh, it's been a while if we did. So um, here's what we're going to do. We're going to just type in the number U. Oh, wait. Uh, U? Uh, no, 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 not U, because U has been written as a vector. How about V? OK, V is not yet an assigned letter. Hmm, OK. And so this thing shows up. That's called a slider. OK? So here's what we're going to do. We are going to make another point, but this time we are going to input the parametric equations using the letter V as our parameter. So we will have 2V minus 1, comma, negative 3V plus 4. Okay, I hope this works. Okay, yes. And now, and now, so right now, uh, H is over there. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I am going to um, hide this parametric curve. Okay, just the points and this vector. Okay, so the values of V will go from negative 5 to positive 5. Okay, I can choose to start at negative 5 just by clicking over here. So now our V is negative 5. Right, so let me slide this down so you can see it. Okay, here's the magic. Okay, play, push the play button. Ooh, okay, so there's the point H and it is shooting down our X, Y planes and hitting these points. Ooh, now it's going backwards. So if you don't want it to go backward, in other words, you want it to go only in the direction of increasing t here's what you do okay so stopped and then we go to the settings and oh whoops uh let me pause the video because i need to move the screen all right there you go now you can see it so in the settings you will click on slider and then uh you will change the repeat instead of oscillating you will choose increasing Okay, so this time it's not going to go back and forth, which is what oscillating means. Okay, so it's going to go back and forth. That's not what we want because we want increasing values of t. You can also change the speed as we see over here, how big the point is going to be and so on. Okay, so let's close that and then let me move the screen again. Okay, so now when we play the slider, it's... Over there, okay, so H is going there until you reach five, and then it goes back to negative five. All right, so of course you can zoom in or out and you can see uh, where it will stop and then go back over there. Okay, so obviously you can also change the values of the slider in the settings window that we saw earlier. Okay, but I think you get the idea. All right, let's go back to our workroom and we'll change our curve a little bit. Oh, my bad. Uh, we're not yet going to change the curve. We saw that it looks like a line and um, probably won't take much to convince you that this should give you a line because these two are linear equations, okay? But of course, this is math. So to prove that the curve is actually a line, not a line, but a line, we eliminate the parameter t. Okay, so what does that mean? Instead of x as a function of t and y as a function of t, we can make y a function of x by solving for t from the first equation. So uh, we get, so let me make some space here first, we get t is 1 plus x, x plus 1 all over 2. So x plus 1 divided by 2. So y equals minus 3 times x plus 1 divided by 2 and plus 4. 
Okay. And if you like, that's equal to minus 3 over 2x. So I should put parentheses. And minus 3, uh, minus 3 over 2 plus 4. So 8 minus 3 is 5 over 4, plus 5 over 4. Okay. So let's go back to GeoGebra. Let's graph this line. And we'll see, of course, that it will match the parametric equation. Unless, of course, I made a stupid mistake. It can happen. And you're laughing right now because it did happen. Okay, it should be 5 over 2. 8 minus 3, 5 over 2. Okay, let's go. All right, so there it is. Y is minus 3 halves x plus 5 over 2. And of course, we get exactly the same line that we got using curve. Okay, exactly the same line. Okay, now let's go back to the workroom and we will modify our example just a little bit. All right, so I made a copy of our first example. Here's how we're going to change it. We're going to make that 2t squared minus 1. Okay. While coordinates are going to be exactly the same, I'm not going to change that. So what are the new x coordinates? So think of squaring t multiplied by 2 subtract 1. And one advantage is that uh, 3 and negative 3 will give you the same answer by symmetry. 9 times 2, 18 minus 1 is 17. So this will also be 17. Okay. Minus 2. 4 times 2, 8 minus 1, 7. 7, and over here is also 7. Negative 1. Uh, 1 times 2, 2 minus 1 gives you positive 1. And then, uh, yo, one stays one. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, zero stays minus one. Okay, so we have these new points. I'm going to copy them down. And then we'll go back to GeoGebra. And we will replot these points. All right, so this should now be 17. And this should now be... Uh, uh, 7, so 7, 7, oh, I'm sorry, that's C, so where did the B go? There you go, tried to fool me, didn't you? So that should now be 7, 10, and then we will get 1, 7. And then we will get minus 1, 4. Oh, still minus 1, 4. Uh, still 1, 1. And then we will need 7 minus 2. And finally, 17 minus 5. Hmm. Okay, so our points have shifted, of course. No longer a line, obviously, but we can still trace them because I did not uh, delete our nifty slider thingy here. So we have that, and let's play the video. Where, oh, I have to show this of course there we go mm. so there you go it's kind of like a comet you know it's ooh, and then move that way so uh i hope you guessed that this should now be a parabola right and it is opening to the side to the right so usually y is something x squared so because it's pointing to the right, it should now be x equals something y squared, where that something should be positive because we are pointing to the right. Okay, so let's go eliminate the new parameter and then we will confirm that what we get is a parabola facing right. All right, so before we uh, solve for t from x, but now is that a good idea? Maybe not. It looks like 
it's simpler to solve for t from y. And furthermore, we're going to plug t in here. If, if we solve for t from y, we get to plug it in here. And then x becomes something y squared, which was said is the shape that we want for that equation. Okay, so this time, uh, what do we get? t is 4 minus y, right? 4 minus y. Uh, oops, that's not right. Uh, 4 minus y. Okay, so move 3t to the left, we get 4 minus y all over 3. And so uh, we get x is 2t squared, so 2 times 4 minus y squared divided by 9. Don't forget to square the 3 as well, and minus y. Okay. So that does indeed uh, look like the equation of a parabola. And since we're squaring, we can, of course, write this as y minus 4 squared, and then all over 9. Okay, so you're going to get y squared minus 8y plus 16. Expand that out. That looks like a quadratic with a positive coefficient. Okay, so yeah, I'll leave it up to you to expand this, maybe go to GeoGebra and check that we get exactly the same parabola. We will. Okay, so we're going to use the idea of parametric curves to what we would say parametrize a circle. Okay, so everyone knows this is a circle centered at the origin, radius 4. We want to treat this instead as parametric equations, in terms of parametric equations. Okay, so what's the idea? Think of the unit circle. Okay, we all know our trig, hopefully. So each point uh, has coordinates on the x. We have cosine theta. So I'll write it as cosine t, and y is sine t. You can use theta if you like. So, um, but yeah, in, in GeoGebra, um, it's probably easier to use T because for theta, you'll need the keyboard and all that. Okay, so that's for the unit circle, circle of radius one. Here we have a circle of radius four, okay? So our circle has uh, equations. So instead of just cosine T, we'll have four cosine T and y will be 4 sine of t. Okay, uh, what do we need for our parameter? Well, t can be any real number, but uh, well, a circle doesn't go very far. You only have to draw it once. Okay, so of course, to produce a complete circle, you want our angle to go from 0 to 2 pi. Okay, so that will be our natural domain. T uh, is from 0 to 2 pi, okay? Uh, so yeah, if, if you were uh, using interval notation, it will be include the 0. You don't really need to include 2 pi since you're back where you came from. But you know what? It's just one point. So if you want brackets on both ends, nobody's going to harass you for that. Okay, so let's go to GeoGebra and see if we got all right, so our, we will have curve 4 cosine t, comma 4 sine of t, and t will go from 0 to 2 pi. Okay, it does not like that for some reason. Uh, yeah. All right, so that can happen to you as well. So what I do so that GeoGebra knows what I'm trying to tell it, is I just put dummy uh, values for x and y when I, when I type in the format that I want. So I have my parameter going from 0 to 2 pi. And let's see now if GeoGebra can figure this out on its own. So I will change x to 4 cosine t, and y will be 4 sine t. And there you go. So annoying. But then again, you get what you pay for. It's free. 
All right, so there is our complete circle. Uh, but as a bonus, let's see what happens if you shift the circle. All right, so we can move this circle around the plane. What if we change the equation to x minus 3 squared plus y plus 2 squared equals 16, okay? So that just means that the new center is going to be at positive 3 and negative 2. So I hope you remember that, x minus h squared, y minus k squared, the center is at h, k, all right? So that means that I want the x coordinate to shift three units to the right and the y coordinate to shift two units down, okay? So the new equations will just be, take the old equations and we are just going to add three to the x and subtract two from the y, shift, okay? Move all the x coordinates three units to the right and all y coordinates two units down. All right, let's look into your chapter. All right, so if we add three here, whoops, three, and we subtract two here, we get, yeah, there it is. So the new center is at three, negative two. Everything moved to the right by three and down by two. All right. So um, before we do some calculus, because that's what the title of the video implies, um, let's go back to the line segment, or oh, ooh, just to the line. All right, so let's review our very first example. X is 2t minus 1, y is negative 3t plus 4. And I want you to focus on these two points, when t is 0 and when t is 1. When t is 0, we'll just get 0, 0, so minus 1, 4, okay? And when t is 1, we're going to get 2 minus 1, 1, negative 3t three, three plus 4, also 1, okay? So we're going to use this idea, and this time, start with two points, and we want to construct a line that goes from the first point to the second point. So not the complete line, although we can change the domain so that we will get the full line, but we're more interested in the line segment, okay? How can you construct a parametrization for the line segment from one point to another point? Okay, let's make an example. Okay, these were the parametric equations we had earlier, but we have a new problem. We want to find parametric equations for the line segment from 3, negative 2 to negative 1, 4. Okay, so we said that the points correspond, oops, sorry, dropped the pen. We said when t equals 0, we got minus 1, 4 minus 1, 4, and when t equals 1, we got uh, 1, 1, okay? So this is the old example. So let's start with the easy part, okay? We see the, the numbers negative 1 and 4 right there, minus 1 and 4, all right? That's our starting point when t is 0, because no matter what coefficients you have over here, that can be 7 for all we care. When we plug in 0, we'll get negative 1. So that's the idea. If you plug in 0, we, will, we must get 3 minus 2. Okay, and you might be wondering, why 0? Uh, well, it's because we want to keep it simple. Uh, let t go from 0 to 1, okay? Can't it be from negative 7 to, but, but yeah, you could. You could do it for any two numbers that you want. 0 and 1, I hope you agree with me on this, 0 and 1 are the simplest real numbers ever, okay? So we'll keep it as simple as possible. All right, so when t is 0, these will just disappear. 
So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put a question mark right there. Okay, because we can probably guess that the shape of the equations that we want will look like this. We're looking for a line. And we already know that we have when we have something like that, we will produce a line. Okay, so shut up already. I want to produce 3n negative 2. So I will put a plus 3 here and a minus 2 over here. Okay. So now, here's the, the math part, the computation part. When t is 1, I want to produce negative 1. Okay. So, uh, yeah, those are not the best symbols. We're solving for coefficients. So let's put a and b there. Okay. So when t equals 1, we want a plus 3 to be equal to uh, negative 1. Okay, because this is the point where we want to finish. Okay, so a is minus 1, minus 3, minus 4. Okay, so similarly, okay, so let's change this down to minus 4. Similarly, okay, now, now let's try to do this um, mentally. Okay, we want to go from negative 2 to positive 4. Okay, how many units do you have to move to go from negative 2 to positive 4? You need to increase the y coordinate by 6. Minus 2 plus 6 equals 4. So b should be 6. Okay, you don't trust me? Yeah, you don't trust me, right? So we want bp minus 2 should be equal to 4 when t is 1. So b minus 2 should be 4, b equals 6. Oh, yeah. Okay, so let's check our work in GeoGebra. Okay, so our points are 3, negative 2, and negative 1, 4. Okay, so there they are. And we said that our parametric equations are, okay, so here we go again. I would do t comma t comma t from 1, uh, from 0 to 1. Okay, no objections from GeoGebra. So now let's turn t into minus 4t plus 3. And y is 6t minus 2. 6t minus 2. And there you go. So we go from, are we going from A to B though? Okay, so let's try to check that with our slider. Not the edible kind, unfortunately. Is you were served? Uh, no, you can be our slider. But we only want to go from 0 to 1. Okay, so let's uh, Okay, let's go from, let's see, okay, there you go, there's zero, and our point is minus 4u plus 3 and 6u minus 2, whoops, 6u minus 2, okay, so we're starting at 3 minus 2, okay, it, because our slider is set to zero right now, and let's hide the curve, and let's play. Yep, there it is. Okay, we're going from point A to point B. Okay, checks out. Time for some calculus. Okay, we are going to crank up our example and we are going to analyze t plus 1 quantity squared times t minus 4. And y will be t minus 1 quantity squared times t plus 3. Ooh. Okay, so we have cubics in both x and y. I wouldn't try to eliminate t from either one of those equations. Okay, that's just, that's just insane. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to analyze this curve. Okay, we're going to ask certain questions. Okay. So, of course, uh, in this case, uh, t is any real number. Okay, so why are we looking at the last example? Okay, let's get some space here. Okay, so first thing we're going to ask is, um, what are the intercepts of this curve? 
Okay, so in other words, when is x zero or y zero? Okay, x intercepts, y intercepts. So when x is zero, you get your y intercepts, and when y is zero, you get your x intercepts. Okay, so x equals zero when uh, what values of t? We will get negative one or four. Okay, so we will get two values for y. When t is minus one, you will get minus one. Yeah, let me cut and paste this because we're computing this. And we'll get minus one minus one squared minus one and minus one plus three. Okay, so how much is this? We're gonna get eight. Okay, yeah. Uh, Minus 2 squared is 4 times 2 is 8. Okay, so uh, what about the other value? Uh, y will be 4. I'm sorry, um, your t is 4. So you want 4 minus 1 squared times 4 plus 3. 3 squared, 9 times 7, uh, 50 <laughs> or 63. Yeah, it's going to be 63. Okay. Cool. So therefore, our y-intercepts are 0, 8 and 0, 63 are our y-intercepts. Okay. So similarly, when is y equal to 0, uh, t will this time be positive 1 or negative 3. So we will get as our values for x, we get, uh, yeah, you know what, I'll, let me copy this twice. Why didn't I think of that? So when t is 1, that's going to be 1, 1 minus 4, 2 squared 4 times negative 3, negative 12. And when t is negative 3, we are going to get, Minus 3 plus 1 squared times minus 3 minus 4 minus 3 minus 4. Hmm, interesting. So you'll get negative 2 squared 4 times negative 7 will get minus 28. Okay, excellent. Okay, so um, yeah, intercepts, EC, it's basically just algebra. When is x going to be 0? Solve for t, plug it into y. When is y going to be 0? Solve for t, plug that t into x. Okay, so our x-intercepts, can I cheat? Our x-intercepts are going to be uh, x is negative 12, minus 12, 0, and minus 28. Minus 28, 0 are our x-intercepts. Okay. Now, when you're in basic calculus, uh, you have what's called the first derivative test. Okay. Uh, you find the first derivative of your function, y equals f of x. When is that 0? When is it undefined? You look for the critical points. Okay. And once you solve for the critical points, uh, maybe you construct a sign chart and you ask, okay, when is the first derivative positive? When is it negative? Now that you know when it's zero, you can ask for the signs of the first derivative, positive, negative, okay? So a positive first derivative says that your function is increasing. A negative first derivative says that your function is decreasing, okay? So we're going to do that for x and y, but now they're functions of t, okay? And we're going to construct a sign chart together for both x and y, because they're linked together. You need both x and y to look at the points on your parametric curve, okay? So that's what we're going to do next. We'll anal analyze the derivatives. So let me make a copy of this down here. Analyze the first, not first, first, 
derivatives. Okay, so we want x prime, and well, we have a product, and we know how to do the product rule, and we know how to do the power rule and the chain rule. Okay, so I kept it simple, all right? The coefficient of t is just one in all four factors. And furthermore, um, yeah, the numbers are not very complicated, okay? So we will do the product rule, uh, keep the first, and then take the derivative of the second. So that's just one. And then for the second term, we'll keep the second factor and take the derivative of the first. So that will be two times t plus one. And then, okay, we want to solve for zeros. So we keep this as factored as possible. We have a common factor of t plus one, and the other factor is another t plus one plus uh, two times t minus four. Okay, so we don't need parentheses there. So we are gonna get uh, 2t plus 1, 3t, and then 1 minus 8. Is that right? 1 minus 8 minus 7. So 3t minus 7. Ooh, interesting. Okay, repeat for y prime. So here's the y. And then we will do the product rule. We want y prime. Okay, so same idea. Keep the first, take the derivative of the second, which just gives you one. So we can separate. Keep the second, and then take the derivative of the first. So two times t minus one. And again, factor. So we're gonna get t minus 1 as a common factor, and we have left over another t minus 1, and plus 2 times t plus 3. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, so we get t minus 1 and 2t plus t, another 3t like before, but we get 6 minus 1 plus 5. Aha, something different. Okay, and yeah, don't expect the same y, y prime to be the same as x prime. That's rarely, if ever, going to happen. Okay, so therefore, we are going to get not just two critical points here and two critical points here. We're going to put them together. We're going to get four critical points we get a total of four critical values, I should say, for t, okay? Because we will get negative one, positive one, and positive seven-thirds, and negative five-thirds, okay? So we can list, list them in any order that we want, not quite, because on the chart, we want them to be in increasing order. So in increasing order, we're going to get, so who is leftmost? I believe it's minus 5 thirds, followed by minus 1, followed by positive 1, and lastly, positive 7 thirds. Not 73, 7 thirds. Okay? All right. So we are going to make another chart, but this time it's going to be a sign analysis chart. Okay, so let me make a table. All right, so here is a tentative table. I might have to add columns or rows. Let's see how this goes. So the first thing we're gonna do, what's the first thing that we're gonna do? Well, uh, on the leftmost column, yeah, let's start there. We have two factors for x prime, two factors for y prime and they don't, there's nothing in common, right? So let's put the t plus one factor over here, and let's put the three t minus seven factor over there, and let's put this on the next, and this 
down there. Okay. And then uh, we're going to form the derivatives from these two. Okay. So this is our x prime. And we're going to label it. So I'll grab this. All right. And we also want our y prime. Gonna grab this. Oops, sorry, here we go again. I tried to get some invisibles with me. There we go. Okay, so now, uh, all right, so that's good. We can lose these two lines now. We are going to put the critical values on the top row. Okay, and there's a reason why they have to be in increasing order because. The top row basically represents the real number line. And so, uh, oh, here's the one with increasing order. So they have to go from left to right. Minus 5, 3 is first, followed by minus 1, 1, and 7, 3. But the line is not made up of just these four points. Okay? There's all the points to the left of minus 5 thirds, all the points between minus 5 thirds and minus 1, minus 1 and 1, 1 and 7 thirds, and all points to the right of 7 thirds, okay? Which means we're going to need to leave spaces, okay? So this column will remain blank. We will put minus 5 thirds over there, okay? So this interval, this column, represents all the t values to the left of minus 5 thirds. Okay, I hope that makes sense. And then leave a space, next number is minus 1, leave a space, next number is positive 1, leave a space, last number is 7 thirds. And note this, I, I did count this earlier. And so I have also a blank column to the right of 7 thirds. Okay. So now, how are we going to fill in this table? First put in, where is each row zero? So t plus one is zero at negative one. Put a zero. Three t minus seven, you go to seven thirds. T minus one, you go to positive one. Three t plus five, go to minus five thirds. Okay. Uh, shall we do this? Uh, x prime will be 0 when either t plus 1 or 3t minus 7 is 0. So we have 0 here at minus 1 and a 0 at 7 thirds. Okay, and similarly for y prime, we have a 0 at positive 1 and a 0 at negative 5 thirds. Okay, so we have all the points where a factor is zero, and therefore the derivative is going to be zero. Okay? Try not to mingle or mix up the x prime factors and the y prime factors. Okay? But it is important that we put them into one table, not separate tables, because we are going to indicate at the bottom how the particle is moving. Remember that slider where we, we were doing this with, with that single point? That's basically what this chart is going to tell us without using a slider because it's calculus. Okay, so now we want to do a sign analysis. Now that we know when each factor is zero, we have to ask, well, when is each factor positive? When is it negative? Okay. So when t is bigger than negative 1, let's say at 0 or positive 1, then t plus 1 is positive. Okay, So therefore, every number to the right of negative 1 will yield a factor which is positive for t plus 1. Okay? While I have the plus sign grabbed in my copy, uh, let's do 3t minus 7. Okay? If you plug in a number bigger than 7 thirds, like 5, 15 minus 7 is positive. So that is also positive. Okay? And in fact, all of these will be positive to the right of their 0 because the slope of the line that this represents is positive. Okay? 
So therefore, it will be positive to the right here and positive to the right over here. Of course, that means that to the left of these zeros, we should put a minus sign. Okay, so I'll put a minus sign there and I'm going to grab it and copy, 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 copy. You want to skip forward on the video? Yeah, I'm not going to pause it because I'm busy. Okay, there we go. Now, what about X prime and Y prime? So once again, X prime, uh, the factors are found in the first two rows. We're going to multiply the signs together. When you multiply a negative number by a negative number, you produce a positive number. That should be a plus. Minus minus still plus. Minus minus still plus. Okay, so in fact, everything to the left of this zero will be plus. Uh, yeah, because you know what? This represents a parabola. A parabola which is opening 3t squared upwards. So to the left and right of the zero, we should get plus, and yes, plus times plus gives you plus. And in between, you should get minus. All right, check. Plus times minus, plus times minus, plus times minus. All of those will give you a minus. Got it? Okay, so same principle. Between the two zeros, okay, that's again a parabola opening upwards. So while I have the minus, I'm going to copy it between these two zeros and double check. The factors are t minus 1 and 3t plus 5, so we get minus times plus, minus times plus, minus times minus. Okay, everything to the right and to the rest are going to be plus. Yeah. Okay, so there we go. Um, all right, so I needed a pause because... I wanted to prepare this template of arrows. Okay, why do we need these arrows? What does a derivative mean? A derivative is a rate of change. What did we learn in basic calculus? If a derivative is positive, it means that the quantity it represents is increasing. If it's negative, the quantity is decreasing. So if x prime is positive, it means that x is increasing. The x coordinate of your moving point is increasing. What does that mean? You are moving to the right because the x coordinate goes right or left. So when x is increasing, you're moving to the right. When x is decreasing, you're moving to the left. Similarly, when y prime is positive, it means that y is increasing y is going up or down. So when y is increasing, y goes up. When y is decreasing, y goes down. Okay. But we basically have more or less eight compass directions. Okay. North, south, east, west, northeast, uh, southeast, <laughs> uh, southwest, and northwest. Okay. So these derivatives put together is going to tell us, are going to tell us which of these eight directions, more or less, we are facing. Okay, we're going to start with the points where you don't have a zero, okay, in either one of x prime or y prime, okay. Those are the easy ones. So let's concentrate on these two. Okay, so x is increasing, y is increasing. You are going to the right and up, right and up. That's this direction, to the right and up. So I'm going to copy this arrow over there. Got it? How about here? You are going to the right and down, right and down. So that's this over here, right? And down. This one, left and down, left and down, that's this one. 
Mm. And now, uh, left and up. Left and up. Over there. Lastly, we have right and up, kind of back where we started. Right and up, like this. Okay. So now, how about the zeros? Okay. When we were learning uh, basic calculus, and we did sine charts for the first derivative. You can also use those sine charts to identify local max and local net. Okay, remember those. If your function is increasing, and then the derivative is zero, and then suddenly the function is decreasing, that means that your critical point is a local max. Increasing, decreasing, that's a local max, okay? We can use the same idea here to tell us how the particle is moving at this instance of time when t is minus 5 thirds, okay? So you're moving to the right and up. Now you're moving to the right and down, okay? So that's literally, look at the pen. It's literally pointing to the right, okay? So you have this arrow pointing to the right, that also gives us a horizontal tangent line, not a horizontal asymptote, wrong word, horizontal tangent line, okay? And that makes sense because when we have y prime equals zero, you have a horizontal tangent line when y is a function of x, but this time y is a function of t. Okay, how about at negative one, so notice that the zero is now in x prime, not in y prime. Okay, so let's see if we can trace the story. You're going to the right and down. So uh, from your point of view, you're going right and down. And now you want to go left, but still down. So now you're going like this. So from right down, to left down in between your pointing, your arrow is pointing straight down. So we want this direction. <clears throat> okay. So now we are going to the right and down. I'm sorry, uh, left and down, which in, uh, let's see, I'm sorry. Uh, so it should be like this. <laughs> left and down. And now you want to go left and up. So you want to go like this. So therefore, our, um, yeah, left and down, left and up. So your arrow should be pointing left, okay? From my point of view, it looks to the right, but from your point of view, it's to the left. And your point of view is what matters, okay? So lastly, we want to go left and up, left and up. And now we want to go right and up. So we want to go like this. Okay. So in between, the arrow is pointing upwards. All right. So you get something that looks like this. Hmm. Okay. So let's put it all together. You're going right and up, pointing left left and down, pointing down, uh, right, uh, left and down, and then left, and then left and up, and then pointing up, and left and up. All right, so that is how that curve is going to be plotted. Now, uh, when we do a first derivative analysis, we, we look for y coordinates, but uh, this time we have x and y coordinates. So before we go to GeoGebra, let's plug in these four points into both x and y. Oh, wait a minute. These look familiar. Weren't those two of the intercepts? These were not intercepts, though. So we need new values to compute for x and y. All right, so uh, I copied the original parametric equations that we had, and let's double check that these are indeed the correct intercepts when we plug in these two points. 
when t is minus 1, that's 0, x is 0. When t is minus 1, we get minus 2 squared, uh, 4 times uh, 2, 8. Okay, and when t is plus 1, that's 0. 1 plus 1 is 2, 2 squared, 1 minus 4, negative 3, uh, 4 times minus 3, minus 1. Okay, so now uh, we need to plug in this fraction into both x and y. And yeah, if you're doing this by hand, it might be a little bit yucky. So we have minus 5 thirds and minus 5 thirds minus 4. Minus 5, oops, get it right. Minus 5 thirds minus 4. And we also have to plug it into uh, the y coordinates. So minus 5 thirds and minus 5 thirds. Okay, so maple, what is this? Minus 68 over 27, and this is 256 over 27. Okay, so we're going to plot these points. So I need approximate values. So that's what we get. So we get our x coordinate this, and our y coordinate is this. or approximately minus 2.518 and positive 9.4184. Yeah, let's just keep it, keep it like that. Okay, so similarly what happens when t is 7 thirds, okay? So we want Seven thirds and seven thirds over here. Okay, so to speed this up, let me make Maple do the substitutions for us. T is seven thirds there, and brace this up and plug him in. And what do we got? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that looks familiar. Interesting. Okay, so we get uh, that approximation and this approximation. Okay, so let me copy this. So, yeah, it's a little bit of a coincidence that we get the same y coordinate for both negative. Uh, five thirds and positive seven thirds. That is interesting. Okay, so that should be the x coordinate, and this is the y coordinate. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go to GeoGebra. We're going to plot the intercepts. So there are four of them, and two of them are here, and we have these two new points. And then we're going to use our chart to string those points together. All right, so let me show you how to save some time in GeoGebra by um, using the functions defining our x and y in order to create two functions that we can plug into points and save some time. All right, so I want to make sure first that it works. So here is our x of t. So I am giving it the name f of t, and this is our y coordinate. I'm giving it the name g of t because GeoGebra is a little bit sensitive with x and y because for GeoGebra, x is supposed to be x, y is supposed to be y. So we avoid that problem by new letters. Okay. Uh, remember how we plotted points in our first example, A, B, C, D, E, F, and that was for t is minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. In the same way, if you want to make our graph make sense, let's input our points in increasing order of t. So minus 3 was the first, and then we had minus 5 thirds, minus 5 thirds, and g of minus five-thirds. Okay, so those were the two numbers that we got, and now we're over here. 
Now that we know it works, I can hide these two functions because what we need are the coordinates produced by those functions. All right, so that's for minus 5 thirds. And then point C is when T is minus 1. So F of minus 1, G of minus 1. There it is. Ooh, ooh interesting. And then uh, point D is plus 1. So we want F at 1, G at 1. And then point E is 7 thirds. So get out of the way here. F at 7 thirds, G at 7 thirds, and lastly, ooh, mm, mm, ah, and the last point is at 4, so F at 4, G at 4. Okay, oh, 063, so we got to zoom out a little bit. And maybe scoot down. Okay, so there we go. We can see. So we can see it now. Okay, so we need to go from point A to point B to C to D to E to F and keep going. Okay? And you can almost, you can almost feel how the point is supposed to be moving. Okay, so we said to the left of negative three, we must go to the right and up. So we're going this way to the right and up. And then uh, afterwards, uh, between uh, A and B, oh, that's right, because uh, A is an intercept and it's the D, which was the horizontal tangent, okay, uh, facing to the left. So, so the directions don't change as we cross A, all right? So we're still going to the right and up. And now we're going from B to C right and down, from C to D left and down, D to E left and up, E to F right and up. And then after it, F, which is again, there's no sign change. You still keep going right and up, okay? So are you ready to see the parametric curve? Okay, so let's input it. So we want curve and we already have F of T and G of P. And P will go from, so minus 3 to the last one was 4. So let's go from minus 5 to 5. Minus 5 to 5. And there it is. Voila! There is our beautiful parametric curve. And yeah, we can zoom into some of it. And we are hitting the right point. But of course, because um, I type in F and G. So that all we have to do is plug in the parameters. All right, so to the right and up. And at this point, the tangent line is horizontal. Okay, so we go this way and now the tangent line is vertical. We're vertical on the y-axis. This way, the tangent line is horizontal. Again, we're pointing straight left. Tangent line is vertical. We're pointing straight up and keep moving zoom out a little bit we now move to the right and up as we cross f and keep going to infinity all right whoo one of my longest videos so far and my apologies maybe i should have broken it up but you know how to use the pause button right okay so i hope uh you enjoy that and until next time i hope you enjoy the rest of your day bye